In this video, I'll answer the question, how do you minimize the risk of selling put and cover call options? Let's get started. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that my absolute favorite way to trade in stocks is to sell options in them. Because of this business, we're able to consistently put cash into our pocket every single month. But one of the biggest challenges and problems with selling options is that by selling those options, typically you're selling someone else insurance or protection. So the question is, if we're selling someone else protection, how do we protect ourselves from the next big market crash? In this video, I'm going to give you all the ways that I protected my portfolios over the years of trading in options. And at the end, I'll tell you what my favorite techniques are and which ones I'm currently using right now. As an additional bonus, stay tuned until the very end because I'll show you how we are minimizing our risk right now in our portfolio absolutely for free. This just might give you an idea of how you can protect your portfolio without having to come out of pocket. The first technique that we have used to minimize our risk while trading in options is pretty straightforward and simple, but I still want to mention it. It's simply to have the cash to back up all the put options or covered call positions that we're in and only trade in companies you'd be happy to own a piece of if you had to own them during the next recession. After several decades of trading in options, I've learned that this technique generally gives you the greatest peace of mind. You simply have the cash to absorb every position that you're trading in. In addition to just having the cash, I find that my peace of mind grows even in a bad market environment when the underlying stocks that I've been selling put and cover call options in are solid, mature, and financially stable companies that I believe will be able to weather whatever kind of storm that they are facing. Look, I know that you get more premium by trading in highly volatile, high flying, sometimes brand new or even unprofitable companies. And I'd love to make more money than I'm making now if it made sense to me. But ultimately I know that my true peace of mind comes during the next crash when these less desirable companies are dropping like a rock in the middle of the ocean. In my opinion, it's just not worth the worry that goes along with trading in unprofitable or brand new companies. It literally can make you sick. This first technique is one of several that I'm currently using to minimize my risk when selling options. The second technique that you can use to minimize your risk while selling put and cover call options is to buy yourself some insurance or protection. I mean, if you're doing this right, you should be making really good money by selling options. Why not consider buying yourself a little bit of protection or insurance to help you out during the next market downturn? I mean, we all know the next downturn is coming. It's just a matter of when and how bad that downturn will be. So why not buy yourself some protection to help you to not only survive in the next downturn, but maybe even to thrive? How can you do this? Here are two techniques that I've used in the past to do this. The first one is to use debit spreads. More specifically, you can buy put debit spreads in SPY if you have a larger account in SPX. Remember that SPY corresponds to the S&P 500 index. And simply put, SPX is approximately 10 times the SPY. So if you want to buy yourself some protection, you can buy a bearish put debit spread. Let's take a look at an example of this. Here you see the daily and weekly chart of SPY. As you can see, it's been in a really strong uptrend. However, it's interesting that it appears that SPY is in the upper portion of its upward sloping trend channel. Let's say that we want to buy ourselves a little bit of protection. How exactly will we do that? Let's say that we believe that there's a high probability the SPY would come back down to possibly the lower area of this trading channel, which would put it right around 455 per share. Let's say that we feel like this is most likely going to happen sometime over the next 77 days or about two and a half months. Now SPY is currently trading at 476 per share. Let's say we want to protect our portfolio for a 5% drop in the S&P 500. How could we do that? Well, a 5% drop from 476 will put us right around 450 per share in SPY. Here you see the March 18th option expiration chain for the strike prices that we're interested in. This expiration is about 77 days away. If we purchase the March 18th 475 put option, it will cost us approximately $13.36 per share. To help decrease that cost, we might consider doing a spread. If we believe that SPY will bottom out around the lower part of our trading channel, around 450 per share, we might consider selling that same expiration day, March 18th, 450 put option. That option is currently selling for right at $7.33 per share. So in total, it would cost us just over $6 per share to buy some insurance that would protect us in the event that SPY dropped to 450 per share by March 18th. Now keep in mind that since we sold the 450 put option, that's really where our protection ends. If SPY drops lower than that, then we do not get any increased benefit by owning the 475 put option. However, it does give us protection if SPY were to drop below 475 and all the way down to 450. Our potential win will be the difference between those two strike prices, which is $25 per share, minus the cost of $6 per share. So it's a potential net gain of right at $19 per share. 
Well, how many contracts of this bearish put debit spread should we do? Well, we simply need to do the math. Let's say, for example, that we have a $100,000 portfolio. We're trying to protect the entire thing. Then we divide 100,000 by 475 per share. So we need about 210 shares worth or right at two contracts. The problem with this is that it's costing us $6 per share to buy this insurance. If the overall S&P 500 continues higher over the next 77 days, which seems likely because we're in a strong bull market, then we're just out of pocket this $1,200 for the two bearish put debit spreads that we've bought. So is there a better way, maybe a less expensive way of doing this? Let me give you another technique that we've used in the past that you might want to consider. Here you see a chart for SPY and VIX from December 1st of 2019 through December 29th of 2021. I'm sure you know what SPY or SPIDER is, but let me briefly tell you what VIX or VIX is. In short, without making this more complicated than it needs to be, the VIX is a real-time index that represents the overall market's expectations for the relative strength of near-term price changes in the S&P 500 index. The VIX generates a 30-day forward projection of expected volatility, which is another way of saying that the VIX is a way of visualizing how much fear is in the overall market. Notice that in March of 2020, when the S&P dropped from 339 per share down to 218 per share, or $121, which equated to a 35% drop, notice what happened to the VIX. You see, whenever there's a big drop in the overall market, this pretty much always corresponds to a spike in fear and thus a spike in the VIX. The challenge is that you don't know exactly how much the VIX is going to spike up. In March of 2020, it spiked up approximately 550% while the S&P 500 dropped 35%. However, I think you see how you could use the VIX to give yourself some protection. He said that during the big drop in March and April of 2020, the VIX went from under 20 to over 80 in less than 30 days. Here is the March 15th option chain for the VIX, which is 77 days out. Notice that if you want to buy yourself some protection, and you thought we might experience another big drop in price in the overall market, like we did in March of 2020, you could, for example, buy the $30 call option, which would cost you around $2.60 per share. Now it's important to keep in mind that the VIX doesn't move exactly opposite of the overall market. The VIX is a measure of volatility or fear in the market. So what you're counting on is that if there's a big drop in the overall market, you're counting on there being a spike in fear in the overall market as well. You can see by the charts that this is another potential way for you to buy yourself some protection. You would need for the VIX to be above your strike price on expiration day or for the value of your call option to spike in price so that you can sell it for a profit. What's interesting about the VIX is that just because the January option chain might experience a spike in call option prices, that doesn't necessarily mean that the March expiration call options will also experience the same spike in price. Again, it goes back to fear. There might be a lot of fear and uncertainty going on in the market today, but overall the market might believe that by March, which is about two and a half months away, that things will most likely calm down. As a result, your call option that expires in March may not go up in value as much as say if you had bought one that expires in January. But buying call options in the VIX can be a relatively inexpensive way to buy yourself some protection. You probably want to consider buying options that expire in the next 30 to 45 days. That way, if there was a drop in the overall market and fear were to increase substantially for that period of time, then the VIX should also increase for that next month. This will help you to offset some of the losses that you might experience in your overall portfolio if you have a predominantly bullish portfolio. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just shared with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. The challenge with the techniques I've mentioned to you so far is that they cost you money to buy that protection. Let me show you a strategy that we're currently using right now in addition to having the cash available to purchase all the potential positions that we are in. This strategy I'm about to mention to you gives us the opportunity to buy protection, but it doesn't cost us anything out of pocket. Here you see our current position in SPX. Remember that SPX is approximately 10 times the SPIDER or SPY. This position is made up of two option legs. We've sold two contracts of the January 31st $5,000 call option. These are naked call options. When we sold these call options, we were paid $5.57 per share. Simultaneously, we bought the SPX same expiration day, January 21st, $4,000 put option. I bought one contract. That cost us $7.82 per share. If you do the math, we're able to do this transaction and still pocket $332. Now to give you the complete picture, instead of $332, we actually pocketed $200 because it cost us to buy back the naked call options that we had sold that expired on the last day of December. 
but we're able to buy ourselves a little bit of protection by owning this $4,000 per share put option that expires in a month. We're still able to pocket a couple hundred dollars. Notice that in order for our put option to have value at expiration, the S&P 500 will need to have dropped at least 15%. However, keep in mind that our current strategy is to have enough cash set aside to cover all our short put and cover call positions. So this put option is just an extra way to give ourselves some protection and help our portfolio if the overall market were to experience a sharp decline. This account is approximately a $1 million account. So 100 shares of the $4,000 put option gives us approximately 40% coverage for the overall value of our portfolio. And remember, this insurance doesn't cost us anything out of pocket. Now you want to be careful if you use a similar strategy because we have sold two naked call options on the S&P 500. When we sold those calls, we did some pretty intense math and projections to see approximately where we thought the S&P 500 had the potential to end up at by expiration. We then sold a call option just above that price. Currently we're estimating that from the previous high, the S&P 500 has the potential to increase in price by 2.5% for the next 30 days. Now that's not exact and you want to do your own math. Don't trust mine. But that's a Approximately the numbers that we're working off here. And that number is reevaluated every time we roll these naked call options. If the SP 500 challenges our $5,000 call option, then we'll just adjust it immediately because these are some really big numbers that get out of hand really quick. If you're working with a lot smaller account, you might consider doing similar trades using the SPY or Spider, which is one tenth of the SPX. If you'd like to receive alerts, we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video. Consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of my tips and tricks that help you become more successful at trading stocks and options, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.